a rocket-powered spaceship is pushed forward by ejecting material backward at a relative velocity u that is designed to be constant, giving the thrust force equals u dm dt. In this case, mass and velocity both vary, so the sum of the external forces equals m dv dt plus u dm dt. For a rocket in outer space with no external forces, the sum of the forces is zero. We solve for the thrust force equals u dm dt equals minus m dv dt. Cancel dt to get dv equals minus u dm over m and then integrate the velocity from an initial to a final velocity and we integrate from an initial to a final mass. We get v final minus v initial equals u ln of mi over m sub f. The mass of a rocket-powered spaceship decreases linearly in time as the launch ship rises from the ground while exhausting fuel downward from the ship. We have mass at any time equals the initial mass m0 minus alpha t, where alpha is the fuel burn rate. In the space shuttle, each solid rocket booster engine has an initial mass of 0.59 million kilograms. A final mass, m sub f, equals 91,000 kilograms, and a burn time of t equals 127 seconds. The rocket motor burns delta m equals m0 minus m sub f equals 0.5 million kilograms of fuel, and is designed such that the fuel burn rate alpha equals delta m delta t equals 3,900 kilograms per second is constant. The exhaust has a constant velocity u relative to the spaceship. This provides an upward thrust u equals delta m delta t equals 12 million newtons per engine. Solving for the exhaust velocity, we get u equals thrust divided by alpha equals 3,100 meters per second. The initial mass of the space shuttle, rocket engines, and fuel is M0 equals 2 million kilograms. The thrust of the two SRB engines plus three SR25 engines is 35 million newtons, and these burn a total of alpha equals 4,500 kilograms of fuel per second. There is a downward weight acting on the spaceship and an upward thrust, but no air drag. The constant upward thrust acts on the spaceship whose mass is decreasing linearly in time, so the acceleration increases in time. Choose the upward direction to be positive, then the downward weight is negative, and Newton's second law is m dv dt equals the thrust force minus the weight mg, where m at any time is m0 minus alpha t. We add m0 equals 2 million kilograms and alpha equals 4,500 kilograms per second. Rearrangements gives this integration. The first integral just gives v. The middle integral gives 2,600 meters per second. The third integral is just g times t, and we get minus 1,245 meters per second. The sum of these two numbers is 1,372 meters per second which is 3,000 miles per hour. The maximum air drag force of one half million newtons occurs 80 seconds or so into the flight when the shuttle is already supersonic at 700 meters per second. The thrust was 35 million newtons and the air drag is just one half million newtons. During its ascent, the velocity of the space shuttle is 140 meters per second about 20 seconds after liftoff. To model the drag force during the first 20 second subsonic portion of the ascent, we launch a spherically shaped spaceship. Including air drag, Newton's second law is m dv dt equals the thrust minus the weight minus the air drag, where m0 alpha, and the thrust are the same values as in part C. Take 
Length L equals 8.7 meters. Cross-sectional area A equals 59.5 square meters. The drag force varies with velocity as 1 half rho CDA V squared, where A is the cross-sectional area, rho is the fluid density. The drag coefficient, C sub D, changes with velocity or Reynolds number, which is rho L V over mu, where mu is viscosity or stickiness. For a Reynolds number less than 2 times 10 to the 5th, Vogel has drag coefficient equals 24 of the Reynolds plus 6 divided by 1 plus the square root of the Reynolds number plus 0 0.4. For the density of air, 1.29 kilograms per cubic meter and the viscosity of air, 0.018 newtons per meter per second, then Newton's law is this. But the weight mg is m0 minus alpha t times gm over r plus y squared. It changes with height y above the surface of the earth. The radius of the earth is capital R. Capital M is the mass of the earth. And capital G is the universal gravitational constant. The density of air changes with height as rho equals rho zero e to the minus by dropping to rho equals one half rho zero at y equals 5,500 meters. Canceling rho zero, we can solve for the value of b. It might be fun to write a computer program to find the velocity as a function of height and time.